In this video, I'm taking you to Tarana National Park with all the information for this epic adventure. This is much better than I expected. Welcome to Colombia! I've arrived in Tarona National Park from Cartagena, the liveliest, most amazing city in Colombia. Click on the link above and check out the video. Buenos dias, it's just after 7 a.m. and I've entered Tarona National Park. There's a little bit of a process here, but I will guide you step by step as we get to the hiking point. I need to take the shuttle now, let's go. So I'm at the beginning of the trail and this is how it went exactly. So I took a bus early in the morning from Cartagena all the way to Santa Marta. They say four hours, it took five and a half. The traffic was bad. So I took a company called Marsol. I'll put the details below. The shuttle was fairly comfortable, but do book it in advance, especially in the high season. Now, got to Santa Marta, completely skipped it. It's not an interesting city from what I've seen, read and heard. And um, by the way, it used to be the first city on the coast way before Cartagena. And then I took a taxi from there through a really beautiful scenic road, these beautiful cloud covered mountains. And I got to the entrance of Tarona National Park and I spent the night here. I checked myself in and immediately got to the entrance of Tarona Park where I booked my accommodation. So I booked myself a tent because the cabins were all sold out and I was not planning on sleeping in a hammock. And those, by the way, the last two tents. So that's another reason for coming here a day in advance. Sadly, you cannot buy tickets for the park in advance. hey -oh. So it was a beautiful evening. I just roamed around a bit, had some dinner, slept early and woke up at 6 a.m. to get to the entrance of Tarona Park. This is another important step. By 6.30, the queue starts to form. I got there around 6.45 and there were only a few people ahead of me. So I chose the day carefully because it's 1st of January and I knew everyone would be like, sleeping hungover after partying so uh, seven o'clock they opened the gates i got in i got the tickets um i paid for it by card and they gave me this bracelet then i got the medical insurance which is really important it's not it's not an optional thing even if you have your own insurance and they gave me this one but this one is only in cash by the way do bring enough cash there's no atm machines here at all the closest one is in santa marta i then took the shuttle and then I got here, let's start the trail. I will give you more tips as we go along about accommodation, what to bring, what to do, etc., etc. So let's start. There is an option to take horses if you don't want to hike, but I prefer my own legs. It didn't take very long on the trail to see some monkeys. They were quite friendly and came pretty close. It's a pretty easy trail so far, but the point is not to just get to the beach, but also to enjoy, you know, the incredible variety of plant and animal life here. And that brings a little bit of a challenge because there's a lot of bugs here, especially mosquitoes. So don't forget to bring yourself lots and lots of insect repellent. Let's continue. It's getting a bit more steep now but not too difficult still. It's been easy so far because it is dry. When it gets rainy and muddy, that's when it becomes tricky. So shoes with good grips are a must. It's almost been an hour and I can hear the ocean roar. So I think I'm pretty close to my first beach. Let's continue. Yay! First glimpse of the beach! It's been an hour and a half since I left and I'm pretty close to the Arrecifes beach. 
So the trail has been pretty easy so far, you know, a little bit of up and down, but nothing crazy. Just make sure to bring yourself some shoes for good grip. And I wore trousers for the hike, which was a bit of an overkill, honestly. Pack yourself light. Also, don't need to carry 10 bottles of water. You can buy it inside. It's a little bit more expensive, but that's the price you pay for not carrying it. Say hello to the leaf carrying ants. My first time seeing them in action. Now they can't digest all these leaves, but they use a fungus to convert it into food. Time for the first river crossing. Welcome to my first beach in Tarona Park. This is Arenisha and this is a beach where you can swim. Look how beautiful it is. The combination of the sea and this behind me is absolutely amazing. Never seen that before. So you cannot swim at just any beach you want. There are beaches marked where you cannot swim because the current is strong and a lot of people have drowned. So what I want you to do is take a photo when you're booking your accommodation, they have a map. Take a photo of that and keep that for reference. It is pretty good. Let's go check out this beach. Aranias was absolutely gorgeous and there was no one here, which is quite surprising, but I really enjoyed my time here. But it was getting hotter and it's time to move on to our next beach. In the park, cash is king. Make sure to bring plenty of it because there are no ATMs outside Santa Marta. And the only place you will be able to change dollars is at the entrance or in the shop and the exchange rate is really bad. I'm skipping Playa Piscina for now because I'm quite hungry, but we'll come back to it and you'll see why we need more time for it. I just got to San Juan Beach and this is the time to check in. So let's go check out the tent. I'm super hungry. It's time to go get some food after that. This is much better than I expected, seriously. So I'm gonna get some lunch and continue on further because it's a little bit too crowded with all the day trippers. So I will come back and then there will be no one here and then we'll see the beach. I grabbed a quick lunch and now I'm on the way to our next stop. Welcome to Playa Nudista. So don't let the name put you off. It is just the name. It's not a mandatory thing. I haven't seen anyone naked here actually, but it's a beautiful beach and there are a lot less people there. Let's go check it out. This is the furthest I'm gonna go in Tarona and honestly there are more beaches but it requires more time which I don't have. So yeah, let's enjoy the beach together. Well, every time I get to a beach, I think this one's my favorite and then I get to the next one and I'm like, okay, I changed my mind. So. No favorites, they're all absolutely stunning. I'm gonna head back because it's getting a bit late. So I'll see you at Cabo San Juan. I'm back at Cabo San Juan. And as I said, once the day trippers left, it's become a lot quieter and calmer. Now, I don't think you should do this as a day trip because you will be constantly on the move and you're not going to enjoy the beauty of this place. So definitely stay at least one night, two nights if you can, if you have more time. I sadly only have one night for this. Secondly, you will get very limited internet signal. This is the only place you'll get a little bit of it, but I think that's a plus, not a minus. It looks like the sunset's gonna be exciting because there's a bit of cloud which will add to the drama. Let's see what that's like. Oh, I'm so happy there's clouds.
Buenos dias from paradise. So I had an interesting night. Um, it was quite nice to sleep next to, you know, the sound of waves, but it got a little cold at night, so I had to bring out my jacket. I woke up around six and here's how the rest of the morning went. It was epic. The sunrise in Tarona wasn't in my plans and I'm so happy that I got to experience this magic. I did some yoga afterwards, which was also quite fun. There was no one around at this time, by the way. And then I decided to go for a little swim, which was even more amazing. I don't think I've had a better start of day like this in my entire life. After some breakfast, I spent the rest of the morning at Cabo San Juan. There was still no one around, so it was really, really nice to be around this beautiful beach. But once the day trippers started arriving, I packed my bags and we are going to our next stop, which is another amazing beach. So I want to tell you a couple of things. One, I forgot to tell you to pack a towel if you're staying in a tent. Secondly, there are three options at most places. You get to stay in a hammock or you get to stay in a single person tent or a two person tent. I went for a two person tent. It was much more comfortable. Secondly, the first bank camping is Arecife, which I think is the fanciest. They even have Wi-Fi. But the problem is it's quite far from everything. The second one is up in the jungle. No idea what that is like, but it's a bit far, 45 minutes walk. And the third one is Cabo San Juan, where I stayed. I actually quite liked it. Uh, because it was basic but nice and the restaurant was also pretty good. So you take whatever you want. I'm gonna go do some more swimming. And this one's called Playa Piscina, but it means swimming pool. So it's called swimming pool because you see these rocks behind, it breaks the waves and it's a nice little calm area and this is why you can swim here. You know what they say, save the best for last, and that's exactly what I did. The piscina had the calmest waters of any beach in Tyrona, and I also met some lovely fellow travelers, and we had a great time here. Colombia is my new travel favorite, and I have a lot more information for you, so click on the link above and check out my Colombia playlist. That's all from Tyrona. Here's my last tip before I let you go. They close the park a few times a year to let the nature rest, and those dates change every year. Before you start planning your trip, check the link below for the official website and check the dates for which the park is closed. Well, I have a two hour hike and then I'm flying to Medellin, so time to go. In the next part of my Colombia travel, I'm heading to Medellin, the city of eternal spring. And yes, it is famous for another person, but we'll talk about that in the video. Click on the link above and meet me in Medellin.